Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the Cube Controls GT Pro Zero wireless wheel for the Simu Cube system. We'll run through all the specifics about the rotaries and buttons, and we'll let you guys know what we think about it. So hang tight, we're gonna do a quick unboxing, then we'll go into some adjustments and see how this thing feels. So when you open the box, it's got a cardboard foam line, make it real banner, uh, obviously to get you interested in the product. And behind that is a bag, a foam bag that contains your steering wheel. Now, um, you guys know these cube wheels have the QR system basically attached to the wheel itself, but here's a look at the front and then the rear where you have your antenna and then your power cable adapter for charging the battery or running it off of USB power. Very good looking wheel. Next behind that section is a, another area of cardboard accessories. We got your power cable here that I mentioned before. The ends are plastic. Um, I think they probably should have done metal there, but uh, it's got plastic ends and it screws into the back of the steering wheel that will allow you to recharge your battery or run it off of USB power. You also get a handy dandy accessory bag that has both tools, little, you know, pliers and stuff like that, bolts for your QR system. This is very handy in case you don't have a bunch of tools laying around. This is how I adjusted the shifter paddles that you'll see later on in the video. Obviously you get instruction manuals. Um, we don't read those around here, so we're gonna chuck those to the side. Um, and behind that is your accessory sticker panel um, where you get a bunch of stickers that are shiny stickers that attach to the steering wheel. So that's what comes in a box. Um, it's an unboxing guys, you know how they go. Um, it's a box that has your stuff in it for the lack of better words, but you know, it's kind of interesting to see what comes with this product. Like I mentioned before, there's an antenna on the bottom right hand side. The power button on this, steering wheel is very cool it has a, like a push button power wheel similar to what i was doing with my mclaren wheel but here we go here's what it looks like outside of the box All right, so here we are. We got this thing mounted up. Um, we're using uh, obviously the SimuCube 2 quick release system. Um, the first impressions of the way this wheel feels is there's nothing, I mean, I don't know of anything that can compare outside of the, um, some of the Sparkle road wheels that have this type of feel to the initial grip. Now this is a 300 millimeter wide rim, but I believe because of this curve and this concave type of design, it feels a little bit more narrow. So for me, this feels closer to my Asher F28 in size than it does to my SRB. Um, the next thing I noticed that the indentation for the button surrounds are quite fabulous, actually. They're angled towards the angle in which you would attack them at. So if you notice these on the bottom, they have an angle where my thumb is easier to get in from this side versus the left side. And the left side is the same. We also get two rotaries down here, and we'll see how those work in race. You know how those things go. Some ideas look better on paper than they do in person. And then obviously we have our carbon shifters uh, that are magnet controlled. So uh, my initial impression before I even drive the thing is that the grip is spot on. The quality of build here is really good. Um, these are all real carbon fiber parts. As you guys know, I'm pretty passionate about. Aluminum casing. We got one, two, three, three buttons on each side, plus your, um, your buttons through these little metal toggle things. I'm not sure what these are actually called, but you can do your research and find out. These have an in, up down type of uh, input uh, which is also pretty cool and then these are up down left right or I'm sorry up down without the left right don't quote me there and obviously we turn it on so now the wheels on we have illumination here 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 and if these switches are down then we get these orange illumination pieces here I don't really care about those I'll keep them up I'm not big on illumination in general or LEDs but one thing I did notice by testing this before um, was that the, the lighting kind of reminds you to turn it off, which is something I don't do too much with my other wheels. So here it is. This is what you see, what you get. Um, we're gonna drive it around and see what this puppy feels like in action. And it looks like the race started at, I don't even know what time it is, 12.15. And those guys are out of here so we can drive freely. The wheel feels good. This is, keep it 100 here. This. The wheel feels really good. 
Yeah, on the entry of turn, it feels really good too. Let's see how it goes. We have to make a legitimate crossover type of turn. But in general, the feel is a little bit, um, I think, more precise and deliberate than the SRB. It's kind of less of a general wheel. This is more for sharp precision type of driving. It feels sharp. Secondly, it feels a little bit too narrow for me for a GT3 car. I would I would have this on like the LMPs or any open wheel F3 car that you like to play with. Okay, I just noticed something there that I want to talk about. But in general, the sizing, eh, take it or leave it. I like a little bit wider wheels. This one is more on the narrow side. One of the reasons why I got rid of the F28 was because it's a little too narrow for me. But in general, this wheel feels really good. So let's, the buttons, um, here's a challenge that I just ran into. No, it's not even a big deal. I was gonna say with my gloves on, it makes depressing the buttons on top a little bit more difficult than uh, obviously if you weren't wearing gloves. And since gloves are rarely talked about, I'm gonna do a video on gloves probably tomorrow because I just got a new pair of gloves in, but I always like to wear gloves, even though it doesn't seem to help the Alcantara wear too much. All right, button feel. There's only so much you could talk about with button feel, guys. It feels like a button. Um, not as clicky and soft as the SimCore buttons. These are closer to, let's say, a Fnatic button or the buttons that are on the SRB wheels. You're not going to have any complaints with these buttons. In fact, they do have a nice little pop on the release that I don't mind too much. So take that for what it's worth. The least of your concerns while you're driving should be exactly how the button feels. But if you're a weirdo like me, it's something to kind of consider is that these buttons are just like a normal button. If you're looking for a soft, more deliberate click like the SIM core boxes. It's not the buttons for you. But I believe these are all proprietary because of the illumination anyway, so you won't probably be able to replicate this feel anywhere. Um, I haven't had any problems knuckling the rotaries, which with my size of hand, I thought I would be rubbing in on those things quite a bit, but one of the constructive pieces of feedback I have about this wheel is when you're doing your full 90 degree turns, you only have basically like this part of your hand on the wheel and it's not really ergonomical to keep your hand kind of planted to the whole thing. So I think that's because of this concave design, the way it flares out a little bit at the bottom. So you sacrifice a little bit of performance for looks, but let's be honest, this thing is a beautiful wheel. Now you can also buy just the rim piece, I believe. You won't get the carbon as far as I know from cube controls because this button box that they use is standard across most of their line. So if you want to switch out the wheel you have right now for this GT Pro Zero style wheel, then um, it should be a relatively straightforward swap for you. Okay, let's park it for a little bit and have a conversation. I don't think I have a pit button assigned. Yeah, I don't mind the bottom, the really flat bottom either. I thought there would be a little bit of stability issues with this, but there's none whatsoever. Uh, this wheel is good to go. I like this wheel a lot. Um, one of the problems for me that probably will prevent me from using this wheel is the full 90 degree turning and the way my hands kind of roll off. Um, I don't feel like I have a, a very strong grip of the wheel when I'm going into a 90 um, on the bottom side. It turns into this type of thumb hanging in this indentation area right here, which is all fine and dandy, but with these semi cube wheels, most of us have damaged thumbs significantly um, doing 90 degrees or, you know, cross hand type of turns. So um, factor that in, and honestly, that's probably only relevant because of the size of my hand. So it's not like I have grape ape hands, but it's they're not small either. So it makes this type of scenario a little bit more, um, more difficult to get perfect. But I love this wheel a lot. In fact, um, if it wasn't for this concave design that's preventing me from rotating these wheels too much, which I don't think we talked about yet, um, this would probably be one of my go-tos. So 
you know, again, another one of those scenarios where the design, the beauty of the design with the concave design for me prevents me from being able to rotate these wheels with the ease I need to during a race because I'm always going through my menu system. And now when I'm driving, I'll actually show you guys. Here we go. When I'm making, you know, let's say a maneuver or something like that, I'm driving and I want to change my brake bias for an upcoming turn, I have to, I can't just reach over with my hand kind of stabilizing the wheel um, the way I do with like the SRB or even with the GT3 wheel from Simcor, where I kind of just, you know, have a little bit of control here. It's not much, but it's a little. I can still kind of, you know, get around. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll turn the wheel while I'm doing that. So with this one, because this thing is so hard, far down and so depressed within that beautiful concave design, I have to lift my hand off the steering wheel and then figure out a way to get my hand in there. So that is obviously an area of concern for me when it comes down to how how much use can I get out of this wheel. Um, and if it's in a car in which, you know, I'm not really adjusting things, like my brake balance obviously is on my button box. But if there's something like menu navigation that I plan on doing a lot, then I don't know if this is the, um, the wheel that's gonna make me you know, comfortable through a long-term race. Obviously this is all muscle memory stuff. So, you know, I could train myself to, to figure out how to do that in a more safe manner, but just something to note. Obviously this is a channel for splitting hair. So the user experience for me uh, with this wheel is very good. I like it a lot. Uh, we didn't even talk about the shifters yet. We'll talk about that in a second, but in general, I don't see why anyone would be unhappy with this wheel. So, the shifters. You guys know I'm also pretty um, opinionated when it comes to shifters. And for me, the SimCore shifters are still the best by a lot on the market. Sim Racing Bay's GT3 are a close second for me. This one is very far off, and I have to tell you why. And at first, when I first grabbed this wheel and mounted it up and tried to feel the shifting, it was a no-go. Uh, the paddles were kind of flared away like butterfly wings and uh, the, the depth of the paddle was not the right depth and how far they flared out was also an issue. So I went and used our tool, actually I used my own tool, but they provide you tools to make these modifications to the shifter, which are made out of either four or three millimeter thick carbon fiber also. And they're very dense. I know there was a couple guys that had complaints about cracking their shifters. And the way I look at that is kind of, you know, this this shifter <laughs> is extremely light to touch, right? So think about the Fnatic F1 wheels that used to be out back maybe two, three years ago and how soft they were to kind of get the shift to go in. These require very little force to shift the wheel or shift the, the car. And I like the more crisp, meaty, like throwy type of shifter, obviously. Um, so this one is a little bit weird for me, but I was able to extend the shifter out to the positions that I wanted them to, the depth that I need for like, to get my, you know, gorilla sized hands in there. And everything else is basically fine. And quite frankly, after using it for a couple laps, I don't mind it being a soft shifter. Definitely more quiet for when the dragging sleeping, so. I don't really have any whines about that either. If you like soft shifters, this is the one. Now I did look in the box, there was no extra magnets included. I'm going to shoot an email off to them and ask them if there's any way to make the resistance on the shifter a little bit more um, crisp and strong, probably a stronger magnet, obviously. But I obviously haven't done that yet since I'm super excited and uh, cracked it out of the box and sharing it with you guys right now. So uh, final thoughts on this thing. I love the adjustability. Specifically of the shifters, I was able to get them exactly where I wanted them, where it feels comfortable for me. The grip on the wheel when you're going straight for me is second to none. It's a really good grip. Um, but when you turn, it puts a lot of strain on the little muscles in your body. So I'm feeling all types of new strains now. The knobs here for rotary, they're a little too far indented. So it makes getting inside of there uh, and changing the the bias or whatever you have mapped to those rotary is a little bit more difficult. But I did also want to share that the rotary knobs by your pinky 
are pretty cool if you get the hang of modifying them. So I use this as the increment for my menu selection. So if I go over to my menu, let's say I wanna change something, this one, and if I wanna increment it, I can just obviously, while I'm driving in a straight line, roll this here. Now some wheels obviously have it up here, but I think that would be intrusive and cause problems while you're driving, especially in turns. So I don't mind the location down there. I haven't had any issues where I bumped into it yet. So that's pretty much all good for me. And in general, it's just a really good wheel. Um, it looks fantastic, as you guys can see. Let me get off this track before I screw anybody else up. Um, it looks terrific. The brush finish on the wheel is pretty good. Alcantara, obviously, I'm, I'm tired of it, guys. You guys gotta get better. Stop making Alcantara wheels, please. Or have an option for leather or some type of vinyl. Um, yeah, the design is, is really great. They did a really good job with this wheel. For me, it's a little bit too small. I think that may be what's causing some of my rotation problems. But in general, you know, it doesn't get much better than this just from a look standpoint. And the shifters, like I mentioned, after you modify them, they're good. So I don't think many people will be dissatisfied with this. In fact, you'd probably be pretty pumped. I also drove it at night. Um, and these lights at nighttime are pretty interesting to look at. I don't really care for light because I usually memorize the location. And if I were building this wheel, which I you know, may grow some balls and do one day, build a wheel, I, I really have to emphasize how important it is to have um, the look left and look right button up here and then another function that is easy to get to like pit limiter, headlight flash. Those are like your ideal locations. Between the side rotaries, the obviously the beautiful look, the terrific feel, ergonomics it feels like when you're straight on. Uh, I think this is, is one of the top quality wheels I've had. Um, I'm happy to have it. I don't know if I'll keep it, obviously, because of, you know, Gorilla Hands and my SRB wheel is probably my favorite of all time. But um, this is a very good wheel. And at the price, I think we paid somewhere around 900 bucks for it. Just let me double check, actually, so I'm accurate. So this was 730 euros shipped to my location in Delaware. Um, and it, to it cost me a total of $880 uh, US for this wheel, which is right around the price of the Sim Racing Bay wheel, a little bit more expensive than the F28. Um, at the end of the day, like I said, it's a good wheel. I think everyone will like it. I think if you have big hands, you may find some ergonomic problems, but in general, I haven't had any challenges with it. Uh, I've used it a couple times in races and whatnot, and it seems to be pretty good. And you know, I really like this wheel. It's just unfortunate that it's a little too small for my knees, but I think this is gonna be respected and desired by a lot of people. The things that bother me about this wheel particularly are the inset of the brake bias and TC level button. Um, the fact that these are toggles for some reason instead of actual deliberate um, inputs. And basically that's it. It looks terrific. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think this is one of the better looking wheels out there, similar to Precision Sim Engineering. These people are very, very big on aesthetics. Um, and they it, it did a good job with this thing. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thank you all for watching. We have some more videos coming up in the near future. I got a bunch of equipment sitting around that I'm gonna do some honest reviews on. Um, and then we'll do a giveaway at some point, hopefully at the end of March time period, depends on our subscriber count. Um, and then we'll in give you guys a little bit more insight into what I plan on doing with this channel. But thank you guys for watching and being patient with me. We'll be around at some point, can't promise when, but it should be in the near future. Have a wonderful day, everyone.